What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Culination Media and welcome back for another live Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire Wi-Fi battle against a subscriber slash follower on Twitter. Today we are going up against Destiny here in a mixed tier match. So we're bringing stuff from uh, all over the, the tiered spectrum, if you will. And I'm going to be trying out a Mega that I haven't used a whole lot this generation, only a handful of times. Uh, as far as how many times I've used it on the, the channel in actual battles, I have no idea. Maybe two. Hasn't been, been uh, very much at all. And that's going to be Mega Bayonet. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what it can do uh, in a battle here. Uh, now, as we're getting started, and before I go over the team again really fast, uh, just a friendly little reminder in case you guys haven't done so already and you would like to share your support to the channel, the series, and all that fun stuff, you can do so by clicking that like button right below this video. That helps out a lot, and so do your comments and suggestions down below, so feel free to leave your thoughts down there. Uh, and uh, as always, I do appreciate you guys' support. You guys have been great lately in the comments and uh, on the likes and all that fun stuff. So as for our team, we've got the Mega Bayonet, as I said. We have Choice Bandit, Star Raptor. We have a Focus Sash, Shell Smashing, Alma Star, because in Helix we trust. Then we have uh, Specially Defensive Cradley with Stealth Rock, Recover, Toxic, Giga Drain. Uh, we have Choice Scarf, Magnazone with the Magnet Pull. That's not really going to come in handy at all here because there's no Steel types. Fero is really cool to see. Uh, Mandibuzz is probably going to be difficult to take down. I'm guessing that's going to be a Mega Gallade. Ambipom will be used for Fake Out Pressure. Porygon 2 is one of my most hated Pokemon of all time. I just cannot stand the sight of it. It's just, I don't know, it's just a Pokemon that I hate. Uh, there's like maybe two, two handfuls of Pokemon that like as soon as I see it I get irritated. And Porygon 2 is just one of those. Uh, it's, there's really no rational, rational explanation for it, it's just, I don't like it. <laughs> I guess it's just too bulky, and I just always have issues killing it. I don't know what it is, uh, because it's not like it's a cheap Pokemon or anything. But anyway, moving on beyond my irrational, uh, hate of Porygon 2, we also have Torkoal, which is gonna be our Stealth Rocker, and our Rapid Spinner. But looking at this team, I don't really see anything that can set up rocks or hazards at all. So... Uh, I don't know that we're going to need to use Rapid Spin, but I do want to set up Stealth Rocks because Firo and Mandibuzz won't like that, although the Mandibuzz could have the Defog, of course, to get rid of those rocks. We'll see what happens. And my opponent's actually going to lead off with the Porygon 2, which is not a good matchup for Torkoal here, and he's going to trace my White Smoke, so we can't lower his stats, but that really doesn't matter. Not that I was going to try to do that. Um... Honestly, my, my main approach here is either to get Mega Bayonet in safely and knock off this thing's Eviolite or Toxic it with Cradley. And we should be able to take this thing on one on one with Cradley because we can Toxic it and recover off the Ice Beam damage if it's even carrying Ice Beam. We'd have to see. Uh, regardless, I am going to, into uh, Cradley here right away as we see the Magic Coat come out predicting the Stealth Rock. Not a bad play at all, and that's actually really cool that you're carrying the uh, the magic coat, by the way. Awesome stuff right there. That's what I like to see. That is what I like to see. Some interesting, some interesting things. But I'm going to go for the Toxic anyway. I don't think you're going to go for it two turns in a row. I do not think that you're going to. In fact, you may switch. I don't know. I mean, if he goes for the magic coat, then we're kind of in trouble. But I'm going to bank on the fact that it's unlikely that he will uh, go for magic coat two turns in a row. Even though Cradley's out here, maybe he thinks I'm offensive. I don't know. I do have several different Cradleys. It just so happens that the ones that I've brought uh, to Wi-Fi battles that I'm recording, they've. I think it's always been the same Cradley. I think almost every single time, except for maybe once. I don't know. Anyway, Domino, the Mandibuzz, comes out, and we get a Toxic off on that, which is just as well because Mandibuzz is incredibly bulky. It's just it's insane how bulky this thing is. Super hard to kill, so any uh, damage would be helpful. I'm going to take this opportunity to set up Stealth Rocks here as well. As he pulls out the Swagger, Swagger Mandibuzz. That is not okay on any level. I'm sorry. Should not be running Swagger. That's just nonsense. Um, and we do break through the confusion, though. Uh, of course, I did forget to specify that we were doing Smogon rules. I mean, I figured that would be obvious because... I always do smoke on rules. That's just the rule um, <laughs> that, that I do personally. 
uh, when I take battles, that's just what it is. But I didn't specifically specify that, so I'm not gonna not gonna complain about it too much. Because I'm just gonna switch out here. If I had to guess, it's probably Swagger Foul Play. A little bit interesting to see that on a Mandibuzz, but we have this thing Toxic, so I'm not really that afraid of it. And we can just go into Robocop. Robocop, I almost mispronounced that. Uh, we can go into Robocop, the Magnus Zone here. If he wants to go for the Foul Play, so be it. He doesn't have any immunities to uh, electric type moves. All he has is that Rotom to resist it. It's Rotom Heat. So we should be okay to just Volt Switch out here. Because either he leaves this Mandibuzz in uh, to take the Volt Switch, or he switches out and he has to take 25% coming back in because of the rocks. Especially because that's really his only Pokemon that I could see possibly having the Defog, but he hasn't used it yet, so we'll see. That Volt Switch actually does some decent damage to this Rotom Heat coming in. Uh, that actually is a little bit surprising how much it did. It might just be offensive, or maybe it is uh, physically defensive, which is somewhat common. Now let's see, how do we want to attack this thing? Uh, we could take this opportunity to go into Bayonet, but I don't want to get Will-O-Wisp. And actually, Bayonet can't do a whole lot. A Shadow Snake won't kill from there. We could go into Torkoal, but I don't want to take an Electric-type attack. We could even go into Amistar and try to set up here. But I feel like our best and safest option is to go into Star Raptor, which is Choice Banded. And we can fire off a Double Edge. Uh, the only thing that worries me is that if this thing is is offensive and it's choice scarfed uh, We're gonna lose our star Raptor It depends unless he's scared of us being choice scarfed because it's very common for star Raptor to be choiced uh, But it could be choice banded or choice scarf. That's one of those things that can go either way if I am choice scarfed Obviously, I would outspeed uh, but it doesn't matter because he just showed his lefties there, so he's not choice. We don't have to worry about it, and I'm going to go for the double edge. Choice banded, that stab, boosted by Reckless. It's a critical hit, and that is overkill if I've ever seen it. That was uh, definitely going to be a KO there. Down goes the Rotom, and that puts us in a good position, especially to fire off Electric-type attacks really without worry because I think that may be his only resist. I'm trying to remember what his team looked like. Mandibuzz is coming in here. It takes 25% due to the rocks. It is toxic as well, but it's not going to matter because we are going to outspeed this thing and we're going to get a double edge off. And I do not think that Domino is going to take that. She does not. And we are going to take damage due to the Rocky Helmet, which just adds on to the recoil we were already going to take. But still, we're sitting just above 50% of our maximum HP, which is not bad at all. Uh, considering we took out a Mandibuzz and a Rotom Heat back to back, not even bad. Uh, we have Ambipom coming out here, which does outspeed us. And he's going to go for the Fake Out, most likely, anyway. So I don't want to keep Star Raptor out here for this. We want to save that for the Quick Attack possibility later on. So I'll switch in Robocop, the Magnezone, to take that. And yeah, that doesn't do that much at all. Uh, I don't know if I'm running enough speed to outspeed this, even with a Scarf, which is really sad because I'm not running max speed. I have some speed, but not max speed. It's a really weird setup that I have, um, and that might actually come back to haunt me right here because this thing might outspeed me, but I don't know what exactly it would have to hit me with. It might just U-turn out or knock off. No, he goes for the fling with a Razor Fang. What in the world is this? And we're going to flinch because of that. Now, if you have, like, acrobatics, that'd be really cool. Fling Razor Claw with acrobatics. Not even bad. I can't get mad at that. Uh, no, he has the Covet, actually. So he's going to steal our Choice Scarf as we Volt Switch out. So we have to remember that I don't have that Choice Scarf anymore. At least we can uh, switch between moves, but we're not going to outspeed... Uh, things that are just slightly uh, slower than Ambipom. Anyway, let's see what I want to go into here. Uh, from that range, we can actually just go into Star Raptor to quick attack this thing because he definitely isn't going to survive that. And if he wants to switch out, he's really not going to have much HP left at all. In fact, I think he might only have just two switches from that range. 
right around right around two switches. In fact, the second switch may KO him. I don't know. But we are pretty safe to just go for the quick attack here. It's priority. It's stab. It's all that good stuff. And yeah, Ambipom is just definitely not taking that. Sora picking up a third kill of the match. She is putting in an enormous amount of work here. And I need to use Sora a little bit more often. Yet another Pokemon that I haven't used a whole lot because I don't battle in OU that much. I should bring her more to uh, Battle Spot where it's a little bit more acceptable to just bring uh, some OU Pokemon here and there. But uh, I tend to just battle lower tiers because I like them more. But that's just me. Anyway, Gallade is coming out here. I'm assuming this is Mega. Uh, and I don't want to just quick attack because that is not going to be KOing anytime soon. Especially because Mega Gallade has its uh, base physical defense patched up. Because it's like base 60 something as regular Gallade. And I think it goes up to 90 or 95 when it Mega Evolves. Uh, plus it goes up to 110 speed and like 165 attack or something like that. And just earlier today it was moved uh, out of RU, finally. I mean, it really wasn't there for that long. But still, it felt like an eternity when I was playing RU and just Mega Gallades were everywhere. Finally got moved to BL2. Kind of happy about that. Uh, anyway, Porygon 2 is coming back out here. kind of forgot about this thing. And we were switching in Torkoal. Hmm, only nine minutes have gone by in this battle. Wow, I feel like this battle has been going on for a lot longer than that. More like 19 minutes. We've just been choosing our moves kind of quickly, I guess. Uh, do I really want to leave Torkoal in on this? I don't know that I do. I don't know that I do, especially because that Gallade is still around and I can take a close combat from it. And possibly, you know, Will-O-Wisp it. But you know what? I'm going to say that we'll be fine. And there's the try attack That's going to do just over half, and we're going to get a Will-O-Wisp off. So I know it's not a Toxic, but at least it's some passive residual damage. And we might still be able to take a close combat from a Gallade. I don't know. I don't know. If not, we can just use Torkoal as fodder, because the rest of our team is still in great shape right now. Uh, we do have the priority still with Sora. And Shadow Sneak with Bayonet, that even though Bayonet hasn't gotten into the battle yet, um, we're going to switch it in right now, because we can take a try attack no problem. Um, but Shadow Sneak is going to be super effective on Gallade, so that is good. And we have the priority Will-O-Wisp, which will pretty much neuter it. Goes with a T-Bolt as we switch in Bayonet. That doesn't do that much at all. It really does not. And I'm going to Mega Evolve here, and I would love to go for a knockoff to get rid of this Eviolite. I want it gone, because that will make getting rid of this thing so much easier. Because even with, even with Mega Gallade at, like, full health or whatever it is, I'm more afraid of the Porygon too. honestly. I always have much more trouble with it. Uh, anyway, Biro is coming out here. He's going to take 25% due to the rocks, and we're going to see Mega Bayonet take the field. Gorgeous. I love that model. It's so amazing. I need to use it more often. But anyway, we're going for the knockoff, and that almost takes out this Fero in one hit from there. Yikes. That did like 70%. We got rid of the choice band. Now, what does Fero typically run? Does it get Brave Bird, or does it just go for Drill Peck? Drill Run, I know, is one that kind of sets it apart from its flying type brethren uh, possibly return as its normal type stab uh, either way we resist the stab with Robocop so I'm going in with that Ah, uh, U-turn that makes sense so we have to keep in mind that it doesn't have its choice scarf or I'm sorry choice band and we take that U-turn fairly nicely that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me that play because Firo is now dead when it comes back in and it's just fodder so we kind of got off a little bit easy there as Gallade is going to come back in and we're going to see a mega evolution here, I would think. Now, I could switch out, but at this point with that Firo going down and only Porygon 2 left other than uh, the Gallade, I'm just going to stay in and go for a Flash Cannon. I know that Robocop here does resist just about all of Porygon 2's attacks, but... I'm feeling pretty confident, so we're going to allow this to go down. He actually goes for the Shadow Sneaks. That's not going to take this Magna Zone out, even with a critical hit. 
That would have done nothing otherwise. And we get off a flash cannon, that does, I don't know, maybe about 40%. Brings him down into uh, the yellow range there. I'm assuming another uh, Shadow Sneak is coming. You definitely would have outsped because we lost our Choice Scarf. So you did not need to go for the Shadow Sneak unless you were really thinking that uh, Bayonet was going to come in there. Which is possible, but I'm going to bring it in now anyway because a Shadow Sneak from the range that we're at at this point is not going to take us out. And I could go for Will-O-Wisp. I could go for a Destiny Bond too. But I'm just going to go for the damage. We'll go for the Shadow Sneak, and he actually switches out. Okay, and he's going to go into the Porygon too, predicting the Shadow Sneak or Will-O-Wisp either. You know, it doesn't really matter. He's going to trace the Prankster, which is not the best for us because now he has priority recovery. Um, but what we can do is, if you want to leave this in, I'm going to just knock off the Eevee Light. I'm going to waste no time whatsoever doing that. He's going to go for the recover here, as expected. That prankster recover could become an issue. But at least we have the passive damage going. That's the important thing. I kind of wish it was toxic, but burn will do. Get rid of the Eviolite, and now we should be able to dish out some massive damage to this thing. And uh, we, can, we might even be able to one-shot it with a... Do I have close combat on Sora? Does it matter? Does it really matter? No, I don't. I have Brave Bird, Quick Attack, Double Edge, U-Turn. I might still be able to just knock you out with a Brave Bird or a Double Edge, honestly. Uh, and then, of course, there is Conch, the Amistar, which I would love to get into battle here to finish things off. But I'm going to predict a Tri-Attack. No, 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 no. Why did I do that? I was out with a Ghost-type. Don't. Pre Why are you predicting normal-type moves and going into... Oh, my gosh. I'm trying to lose this match, so I just sacrificed my Star Raptor for no reason. That was the dumbest play I've made in a really long time. Wow. That wasn't even... A, I wish I could say that was a misclick, but that was me just legitimately screwing up. There's no reason to switch in Star Raptor there, predicting a tri attack. And even still, tri attack may have killed from there. What, what was I thinking? Get your head in the game, man. Come on. <laughs> All right, we're going to go uh, into Conch now. And I guess the one good thing that comes out of that misplay was that I can come in here and go for a Shell Smash immediately. Uh, we have our Focus Dash intact because there were no hazards going up. He's going to go for the Recover, so he's not going to get up to full HP. He'll get kind of sort of close, but with the Burn, he'll be only at about 75% of his max HP. And we're going to be able to outspeed, unless he goes for Recover, of course. And we'll be at plus two special attack. We can fire off a stab surf. And without the Eviolite, that might just take this thing out. And if it does, we're in an amazing position. Absolutely amazing position. And yes, the Porygon 2 without that Eviolite cannot take the plus two surf from Amistar. And this is perfect because we are not down to our Focus Sash yet. Um, so he's going to bring the Glade back in. He'll take a tiny bit of damage due to the rocks. Uh, but if you want to go for Shadow Sneak, be my guest. It's unstabbed. And, you know, like I said, our Focus Dash is still intact. So you want to get that little bit of damage. That's pretty much going to be the end of the match because all he has left is Fero. And that is going to go down due to the rocks upon re-entry onto the battlefield. So I believe that is a 4-0 in our favor, unless I am forgetting that he has a Pokemon still alive, in which case it may not be a 4-0. Let's see here. Let us see here. Yes, that is going to be it. So it'll be a 4-0 in our favor. Thank you very much for the match, Destiny. I'm sure we'll have another one uh, in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. A little bit of a short one, uh, but since we just had like a 40-plus minute battle not that long ago, this was uh, on the other end of the spectrum. So it's always good to uh, have a nice little variety. Like I said, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you're leaving a like rating or a comment or whatever you would like to do. And I will see you all next time. But until then, game on.